So welcome to the second module of our course on ZK-SNARKs. The topic of this module will be what is a proof? The notion of a proof is interesting, it's also somewhat confusing. Um, Odette Goldreich in one of his books says, a proof is whatever convinces me. One of his professors taught him this. And this is by itself is interesting, it's often what, what happens. Um, it's also what happens in, in mathematical proofs because many of the mathematical proofs in, in, in scientific papers aren't really that formal because um, 50, 100 years ago people have tried to make uh, mathematical proofs completely formal but it turned out to be completely impossible. Think of the, the work by Russell and Whitehead um, Gödel's incompleteness theorem. It turns out that getting getting um, proved really, really rigorous is really, really hard. Anyway, this is not what we are going to approach in this class. Um, we are going to talk about a computational notion of a proof, um, which was introduced in 1985 by 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 coincidence to to. Groups. One was Laszlo Babay, the other one was the group by Goldwasser, Mikali, and Rakov. So, in their context, they consider kind of this scenario uh, what we call a proof system. So, we have two parties the, the, a powerful prover, P, who, who shows that she knows a witness W such that the predicate PXW is true. And we have a second party, which is a verifier. Usually we think of the verifier as a weak party who, who verifies the result. So this is, this is what we see. We have on the left uh, the prover, on the right the verifier. Uh, by the way, a convention that we will continue throughout all the slides in this, uh, in this course. Um, so we are going to module P and V as computers. and. So before we get into the, the question of a proof, we actually need to understand what that means, what, what the computers can actually do. Um, note also that often we say proof when we need a proof system. So you must be aware of this ambiguity or this new uh, use of the word proof. Um, and also note that in verifiable computation, it's often true that before the prover sends a message to the verifier, this may be on a request by the, by the verifier. Uh, but this is not shown here. We're going to leave this out for now. Um, so the important ingredients of SNARKs are the, are the following properties. Um, one important ingredient is randomness, which will be discussed we, we will discuss in this module. Another one is interaction, which will be the second part of this module. So this will sort of, the, the overall layout of, of this module is, is like this. Um, polynomials, which are resulting in succinctness, will be discussed in module four. This is a separate topic. And we will also talk about privacy, uh, but privacy, it should be understood, is an optional property. Um, so we have snarks and we have ZK snarks, and this will be discussed uh, completely. Zero knowledge will be discussed completely in in module three. So how do we define computing? We must talk about that. Well, we can think of three physical models of feasible computing. Um, probably you all are aware of the notion of uh, a Turing machine which, which defines the notion of uh, a deterministic algorithm. By the way, uh, we know the Church Turing thesis which says that um, all these four different definitions of computing by Church, by Turing, by Clean and by Post, they turned out to be equivalent. So this has for long been uh, like the gold standard of what computing can do. But um, what they did not include in their module was the power of tossing a coin. So this may so come, come as a surprise, but it turns out that probabilistic or randomized algorithms, they really contribute to computational uh, capacity of what, what computers can do. 
Um, so we can model this as a Turing machine with additional read-only random text. Um, I'm going to explain more thoroughly the advantage of randomness, but before that I'm going to talk shortly about quantum computer. Um, so let's say in, in 90, during the 90s we got this new model of uh, a quantum algorithm, quantum Turing machine. Um, here you will find the, the block or, or Poincaré sphere, which, which sort of represents um, a qubit. Um, and I must be frank, I am not too worried about uh, a quantum computer in the, in the near future. Um, ever since Shore published his algorithm in '94, re researchers predicted that practical quantum computers were uh, 10 years away. Today, almost 30 years later, this prediction still hasn't changed. Still, com quantum computers are a decade away. So I'm, I'm a bit skeptical because I've <laughs> heard this story about, well, quantum computers are coming already for some time and nothing seems to really change. Um, a second point is that um, the problem with quantum computers is related to encryption. If you encrypt something today and you publish it on the internet, then as soon as a quantum computer can break it, then the, the secret is out. But with digital signatures, this is not at all the case. If, if digital signatures, if you, you see that your digital signature algorithm is going to be threatened by a quantum computer, you can just re-sign everything. You can just redo everything and you're still okay. As long as you do anything before the quantum computer can break your, your signature algorithm, there is nothing to worry about. And so if you think about blockchains, then um, we, we can re-sign, use, use the whole, um, everything that's on the blockchain, we can sign it again and, and things will still work. So um, this whole argument about post-quantum advantage of uh, some, some specific blockchain technologies, I, I, I think this is not, not really true. Um, also, one can argue that the existence of quantum computer does not mean that everything is lost, as long as there is a, a complexity gap between multiplying uh, two numbers versus factoring uh, the product, or you know between exponentiation versus computing the district log. One can do cryptography, um, and I'm not the only one who, who who is skeptical. If you look at Dan Bonnet and and Shafi Goldwater in this this video, they they also seem to say the same thing that quantum computer isn't really uh, a threat. So anyway, for for practical computing, quantum computers aren't out there. So for practical computing, we are. Uh, talking about probabilistic algorithms.